Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome down to the studio. I'm Bobby James, a.k.a. Drum and Dirty. So, a couple of weeks ago, a good friend of mine, Terry, an excellent sound man in the city, asked me to come down and help him tech a TD-50 drum kit that they plan on using for a live concert recording. This live concert recording consisted of quite a few vocal mics in the front, bass, keyboards, guitars, and uh, a full band set up, but they wanted to have more control, so they didn't want all the cymbals and the acoustic drum kit bleeding into the microphones, um, creating issues in mix later on. So they went with a TD-50 drum kit uh, that they wanted me to come down and replicate as close as they could the acoustic kit that they were all used to. So that included uh, changing the snare drum wire, uh, changing the drum heads, uh, modeling the drum shells, maybe where the mics and stuff were placed. So in the TD-50, I want to show you that today. Uh, there's a lot of, there's a big virtual world in here that uh, you don't get to see as if you're tuning a drum, but you can do it in here. So instead of using a key, there's your drum key right there. Anyways, after this quick little tutorial, let's get you on your way and we're going to take you down to the Cavalry Worship Center, maybe meet a couple of the guys in the band, show you some of the clips and maybe even get a glimpse into the live performance and what it sounded like. All right, so here we are with the TD-50 module. So first thing I want to do is I want to get on the drum kit and I want to play the toms, I want to play the kick drum, make sure I'm kind of close to where things want to sound. So what we did is we took the jar apply kit, which he had already worked on for a little bit, and he was already kind of comfortable with some of the sounds and tried to replicate some of that stuff that he was uh, using with his uh, acoustic drum set. So we're going to copy this drum kit so we can leave this one the way it is, and then we're going to copy it down the line. And this is how you do it. You go shift, and you go copy up on the SD card number there. Boom. It's going to ask you right there. You go F1, and you want to copy that drum kit. And it's going to ask you where to copy it. So you're going to go from jar apply 001. And then now you want to go down. You want to use the cursor. You go down. And let's go to a user kit. So this is my module. And I've got stuff into the 50s and the 60s. So let's go to user kit number 61. So you're going to hit copy. It's going to say yes. Enter. Boom. Copy is complete. So now... When you go up to here, you're going to scroll up to where you did copy it. So 61, there's your exact copy. So now you can start modifying this kit. So what I like to do is I like to trigger the drum kit. So I'll, I'll actually hit the, the bass drum with my pedal, and then I'll lock it off just in case some of the other drums start to pick up uh, vibration from the drum kit or the stage. They might trigger, and then all of a sudden you're edit editing the snare and you forgot but you were really supposed to be adding the kick drum. So I lock this off. And then now you want to go into the instrument and you want to go to check out some of the instruments. So maybe you want to stick with this kick drum, but you want to maybe make it up to a 22. So just same thing. Read the, uh, you know, uh, just read the stuff on the screen here. I want to make that up to a 22 because that's what I'm used to playing with out live. I usually, what we did, I think with Jerome was we went with it. We wanted something that's a little more, uh, a little more beefy. So instead of going with the coated, we want the pinstripe. And if you go into some of these basic ed editing, basic one and basic two, you're going to find some amazing features. So this will allow you to tune your drum. I think we left it where it was. We did muffle it up quite a bit. So we put some tape on it. I actually think we put a blanket or a pillow in there. Uh, so you can take that all up to a weight. So it even gives you a nice little picture. Um, I think we put a blanket. Uh, we went with a plastic uh, beater and that just gives it a little bit more tick on that uh, pinstripe drum head modeling so let's go to basic two now the snare buzz what that does is that's the reaction to the snare wire or the snare drums uh, resonance with the bass drum so when you play a bass drum it has so much air moving that it'll actually trigger a bit of the snare drum so now you can take this I always put this on I put this about maybe about four or five depending how live I want my drum set to sound. Low level, this was good. The decay. So if you want to shorten up the kick drum a little bit, just because you think that maybe the uh, the tone is, is lasting too long, uh, you can do it right here. This is perfect. Go into advanced. Now kit resonance. Kit resonance is what's happening with the rest of the drum set. 
It's even going to make the toms shake a little bit. And this is actually going to come out in how much you use the kit resonance. It's starting to sound more like a, a real bass drum that's playing with the snare drum now. Obviously, I don't have all my triggers set up right now. So I'm just showing you around the interface. So we've changed the blanket. We've changed the beater. We've changed the drum head. We've changed the depth of the drum set. Or that we're going to change where the microphone is placed. So we can do this. We can go inside. This gets a little bit less movement from the outside of the drum set. Go back. You can get a whole more of a, a, a you know more of a Beatles kind of recording, or maybe the old school Led Zeppelin kind of vibe, where the mics are a little bit off the drum kit and they're getting a bit of room in that as well. Attack and release. Now this is great. This is like a transient. Uh, a transient designer. So what would happen here is you can really make the top end of that kick drum when the frequency hits, it spikes and then comes down. So we'll get a, so this is really gonna start to get sharp. So now that time, I'm gonna bring that time back. So that's really sharp. So now if you take this down, this kind of gives you a bit of an envelope that almost takes away the front click of that uh, drum beater on the head. So I like to spike it up a little bit and then we take the release down on the back end of the kick drum here. So this might come down a bit just so it doesn't decay quite as long. And that is going to allow you to kind of control the incoming kick drum and when the bass drum frequency leaves. This is more of what a sound man would do, changing a drum head, uh, changing the snare wire, that kind of stuff. That's more what the drummer would do. So this is even giving you some production stuff to uh, modify your sounds even a little bit farther than that. So now that we got a nice fat sounding kick drum, let's hear that. All right. So now I'm going to unlock this. So go to your drum kit, go to instrument, and then you can flip through your drums here. So there's the kick drum, snare drum. This is don't. This is when you don't have your trigger set up and you're just programming. Okay, so snare drum. Let's do this one. This is a nice fun one. So that's a nice big snare drum. We got a nice big depth shell depth on that. I love a coated drum head on my snare. So I think we're looking good with this. I think Jerome Jerome was real happy with this one. I could change the mic position. This was real nice. Standard already was great. Transient, same thing. I think we pumped up the top transient, the incoming a little bit, just to give it a little bit more of a sharper crack. And that sounds real nice. So we're going to go back. We're going to go to the basic. Now, this is the same thing, too. We're muffling, and I think we actually did put a bit of muffling on this. A little bit just to kind of stop that. We have a nice little overtone. I think we actually made this go a little bit more. So it's actually what the drum is kind of throwing off. This kind of stops the head. The muffling stops the head. And then the drum tone or the overtone almost comes from the shell and the uh, the heads working together. So we're going to go down like this. Go to basic three. So strainer. This was, I think we cranked this up to a real nice. Actually, no, I think we loosened this off. Yeah, that was it. Loose three, type, and this is your different size strainers, the type, how many wires you got, how much buzz that makes on that bottom head, and you can change that wire level. So this is like what happens when you take the snare drum, and usually on the left side, I got it sitting in my knee, and uh, you pop that snare strainer on. This is the making the level of it. This is the little button on the right-hand side here. <laughs> so that wire... That makes a nice little buzz. So wire tight. That sounds nice. Nice little crack to it. That's real loose. That's getting tighter. That's almost choking the drum a little bit too much. So loosen that off. Yeah, there we go. Um, so that's our jaw ply snare drum, modified just enough to give it a little bit more crack and uh, match that snare drum or match that kick drum. So now we're going to go to instrument, 
I'm going to go down a little bit. And I think he wanted, I think we used a 12. We're going to lock that off. Hear what that sounds like. So I think when he played it, the drums he was worried about, the drums were resonating over top of each other. So we'd hit one, go to the next one, and they were they were kind of resonating over top of each other. So he needs something that was a little bit shorter, and we did that in the release time. So we muffled them up a bit. Tape, that looks good. Snare buzz, let's turn that up to about two, two or three. Kind of did that across all the toms. So let's do, let's do three. Snare buzz, this is the 16, this is the floor tom. So let's make that even a little bit more. Let's make that a five. Hats, it's looking good. Toms are looking good. Okay, so now you kind of guess what we're doing here. You just got to dig around. It just feels great to do to be able to do this and get these sounds to to uh, to come to life according to what you feel your music needs. Um, yeah, so I think this is the virtual modeling world that you guys got to check out. This is how we really become producers as well and really make our sounds original. So hopefully that showcases some of the virtual modeling technology in the TD50 and hopefully it inspires you to go around and dig even deeper. It's an amazing module. This thing's got so much power under the hood. I can't explain it in one video. So you're gonna have to come back for the next video. Peace, love, and big beats, people. Drum and Dirty signing out. All right, good morning, everybody. It is Saturday uh, somewhere in October. Anyways, I head down to uh, the Calvary Worship Center. <laughs> <laughs>